Hello and welcome to a new Italian PNC video. Today we will be discovering and looking at the Noscon Funden map of Earth and its surrounding lands. So basically I just found this like very recently. It was suggested to me by one of you subscribers uh, as I was doing the Lands Beyond the Ice Walls series, uh, which in case you haven't watched, the links to watch them will be in the description down below. And this is something kind of different but it has the same concept at the basis so first of all we have earth earth is in the middle of everything of course uh, in the middle of earth is hyperborea or i would just uh, call it the north pole and then we have all the lands uh, surrounding it so south america north america europe asia africa australia and so on and so forth then we have the ice walls in this uh, map the ice walls seem to have Three uh, gates and not four. I honestly believe there's four. I mean, it just makes more sense. Same as with Hyperborea. And in the um, in the previous uh, series we've done, they were four gates. But anyway, we have three gates here in the ice walls. So the ice walls uh, surround the entire planet. And after the ice walls, there are places where, where you can go outside the Aswolds and discover the lands beyond them. So we have the Barring Town, uh, where Morris trades, discovered by uh, W. Morris. Then we have the Summer Gate, that you can access only when the ice melts uh, from Antarctica. And then, of course, the, the ice walls are Antarctica, in case this wasn't clear. And then we have the Dyatlov Portal, which uh, yeah basically brings you to Asgard. So, uh, first of all, we can notice already some things. The Noscon Funden map is very different. It's way larger, and I will show you what I mean by that in a few uh, moments. And it's very much undeveloped compared to the map shown in the Beyond the Ice Wall series, because the Noscon Funden map focuses on the larger aspect of the multiple worlds that exist in existence, uh, while the Beyond the Ice Walls map uh, focuses itself on the history and the um, myths and the like creatures that inhabit uh, the actual places beyond the walls, while this is more likely uh, just an explanation of actually what continents and what lands exist in the ice walls, so I will try to interpret what actually these lands actually are, because I might know some of them, but I don't know all of them. So this is the second gate, this is something we already saw in the Beyond the Ice Walls series, outside the uh, ice walls are the moving lands of Thoth. I already made an episode on the moving lands of Thoth. It's a pretty large continent where Carthaginians, uh, Punics, and even Vikings came to a certain port point because, of course, by the fact that it's moving, it can be closer to Europe and also not, depending on the time uh, where you actually want to access it. In. Then we have things like the Ancestral Republic. So, the Ancestral Republic is, I I think it's figured, but I, um, it's on the Beyond the Ice Walls map, but I don't think I have covered it yet. So the Ancestral Republic, or like the parts of it, are uh, what uh, humans originate from. So the Ancestral Republic have the Eden Islands, which of course is the Garden of Eden, so where God made the first humans. Then we have the Ark, so where Noah's Ark actually arrived when uh, the Great Flood uh, basically covered the Second Ring. Then we have the Renasier. I, I don't know what this is. I don't know what the Renasier is. If you guys know, let me know in the comments because I am not an expert in things like this. But the Ancestral Republic is probably where the original humans still inhabit the land, or maybe nowadays it's not inhabited anymore because uh, probably after God sent people away from the um, Great Flood and they uh, went to Earth, maybe now it's not inhabited anymore. Then we have the ancient lands of the Anak. I think this has to do with some ancient world religion, but I'm not really sure. Because um, I know there's the lands of the Anunnaki, but that's outside of the second ring. And therefore, I'm not really sure. But then we have the Neptunian Ocean, which we already covered in the Beyond the Ice Wall series. So the Neptunian Ocean is like the major ocean of the second ring Beyond the Ice Walls, which is just usually uh, is a uh, close to Thoth, but since Thoth actually moves around, we can't be sure. When we have Geminia, which is very interesting, Geminia is the land where the gods of um, 
ancient Egyptian religion come from. So Jiminya is usually divided in uh, maps by a Jiminya set and a Jiminya, um, I believe, Ra. Uh, so Jiminya, the, the areas that Ra governs. So Ra is the, I think, the sun god of ancient Egyptian religion. And in the part of Set is uh, the part where the dead live. So basically the afterlife of the ancient Egyptians. And since this is a land you cannot access through the normal world, you'd have to be transported uh, to it through astral path. So either you go there by using one of the gates or portals, call them what you want, or you have to arrive there through death, basically, or some near-death experience to actually visit Geminia. Then we have Asgard. Asgard is probably the most famous of all these, since because of things like Marvel and other like modern uh, reiterations of this uh, land, basically everybody knows what's Ar what Asgard actually is. Asgard is where the Norse gods uh, inhabited uh, the land when the Norse pagans believed in them. Nowadays it's probably not even inhabited anymore since the uh, Asgardians, so the actual Norse gods and the people in the Norse afterlife and even more are probably not even there anymore since the shift in religion probably crumbled the earth and that's probably what this red mass symbolizes, the fact that this land is probably uh, dying, I would assume, as uh, the religion is completely dead. I mean, maybe nowadays it's a bit less dead since there are like uh, some people that uh, share these kind of Norse religion beliefs. I even met someone that had these beliefs, so I guess it's not completely dead, but Asgard is right after the Diatlov portal. Then we have Pitatia. Pitatia is like some very, very like unknown land. Pitatia is one of the, or Ptatia, you can call it what you want, some people believe it's just one of these lands that you can arrive through by actually going from thought. So if you land on thought for uh, a good amount of time and the continent of thought moves, you have to wait basically a lifetime, but eventually you would travel all the way to Pitatia, and Pitatia is basically some like a very virgin, non-touched land, someone something that nobody has actually lived on in uh, centuries, so it's very uh, lush and uh, it's basically full of vegetation and the animals that live there are somewhat astral in nature so you can't really touch them, you have to interact with them through other means, like you have to eat what they eat to actually make contact with them so Ptatia is a very complicated matter but then we have Libris and I have no idea what Libris is also I forgot to mention this but Ptatia and Libris both symbolize the um, constellations and the uh, astral signs of uh, the Sagittarius in case of uh, Pitatia and of the uh, Liber, like the um, yeah, the Liber in uh, Libris, which is like in my language, it's the thing you like weigh things on, so like literally something you put things on and they tell you their weight, but uh, I'm not sure if that's the same thing in English. That said, you can see that this is not the end of the world, of course, this is only the second ring, this is what we live in, and this is what everything else lives in. Of course, we have more rings, but as you can see, as you can probably notice, there is no, like, easy way to actually traverse the second ring. While the first ring, while the Earth and the second ring have actual passages that are easy to uh, surpass through the gates, we can actually just go into the, into the third ring by simple movement, you have to do something completely different, because there's a mountain ring, and these are the tallest mountains in existence. But there are some passages you can take after Geminia, after you land on the lands of the ancient Egyptian gods, there's a small passage that you can do by land, or by plane, I guess, in the modern day, and uh, I guess you can do this, but like, this is probably the only, like, the single, I will actually just put um, a little, like, passage that goes all the way here. So let's say you start from North America. You have to take the Summer Gate, probably, since it's the easiest to reach, since it's literally the gate that Antarctica creates when it, uh, the ice melts. Then you have to go to the Neptunian Ocean, this is probably the, the hardest part. And you had to land to Geminia, but this is just like this simple 
traversation is extremely hard to do since it's literally like this 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 is longer than from north america to the Sem summer's gate then in Jaminia, if you actually manage to survive whatever lives there you'd have to use this island to then project yourself into this small passage and then take some sort of plane or some sort of uh, tracking equipment to actually traverse this gate and go into the third ring i mean this is probably pretty hard uh, something that you shouldn't try probably but you can i guess you can i'm not sure if you can succeed but hey everybody's free to do everything or at least that's how it should be then we go to the third gate as you can see this uh, more accurate map only depicts the second ring and parts of the third ring so here is the like the big one that actually shows nos confundum in all its majesty and this is where we were so we can see here the known lands, the Ptasha, here we have for the Ancestral Republic. Of course, this is very low quality since the map is completely huge in size. And of course, we have to just go like this. Here we have lands I cannot even uh, like try to explain, but these are pretty irrelevant. There is nothing really important here apart from one place that you might want to uh, actually visit, which is Atlantis. You can't really see it because of the low quality of the map, but this says Atlantis. So basically that's where Atlantis is nowadays. Of course, once there was uh, an Atlantis that was in the Earth, we call, and now it's not anymore. Then we have the Pleiades. The Pleiades are these islands um, that are considered to be stars or an, uh, astral bodies when in space, but of course you can travel with them through space. So Pleiades, that's what they are. And not necessarily space as uh, NASA, uh, NASA, I don't remember, uh, NASA intends it, but simply by going from the third gate to the Pleiades, but you, as you can see, they are also blocked by some matter. Then we have another place that isn't very interesting, the lands of Mars. In this case, I do have a higher quality version of this map. We have the lands of Mars. As you can see, there are ice vaults even in the lands of Mars, but there is a very, very good thing that the third ring of the um, existence of Earth is connected by a narrow passage to the uh, ice vaults of Mars, so you can actually travel to Mars through the third ring. So once you actually get to Geminia, uh, escape the second ring and go to the third ring, you have to relatively just do something like this, you have to go back. Uh, navigate through the coasts, uh, go after Athos, which is this land here. Athos is literally just some island that has no ulterior meaning. You can just live in it for a while if you want to. Uh, I'm pretty sure it has like vegetation and should have fruits uh, since it is near the Ancestral Republic, where, is, where that is where God created humanity. So, yeah. And then from Athos, which is this, in case you couldn't see it. Oh, let me check, let me get um, the, yeah, let me trace this too. North America, Summer's Gate, Geminio, that narrow passage that is not even shown here, and then all the way to Aros, and then into this narrow passage here, you can go to Aeria. So Aeria is in the lands of Mars, so in Mars, the planet. And uh, the lands of Mars are very interesting because they are probably the closest and most reachable place from Earth. The lands of Mars, after going through this space, uh, can be reached by this land and you can already get to Aeria. So let me just get the, yeah, the, <laughs> the better quality version of Aeria. So Aeria is this continent, this in extremely huge continent. It's like the Pangaea of uh, Mars. So it's this huge continental shelf that and that is not inhabited by modern humans, of course, we have not yet to reach it, but there are other creatures that live in Aeria, such as uh, Martians. Martians. Um, we have not yet to see them, but we know their existence because of the traces they left on the lands of Mars. Then there is the uh, human colony, which is what we now don't have anymore, uh, also called Terria Chimeria. So, for those that are lacking in uh, ancient Greek mythology, uh, Terria Chimeria is where basically we thought that the Chimerians originated from, originated from. The Chimerians were this population that lived or at least was thought to live in north of the Crimean Peninsula in modern-day Ukraine, I guess, and or Russia, uh, you, you choose, and basically 
the Chimerians were this like uh, cavalry focused population that would invade the territories of the ancient uh, Greeks, ancient Sumerians, ancient Assyrians, and so on and so forth. And then at some point in history, we lost complete trace of them, and that's it. So one of the theories that exists that explains Sumerians is that they were one of the Martian populations that found themselves through a, a wormhole basically on Earth. And from the their population, where which which is in the human colony, of course called Terra Cimmeria, uh, basically went to Earth and lived there for a couple of centuries or maybe some millennia, and then eventually the wormhole reappeared, and those who decided to leave came back to the Terra Cimmeria in the lands of Mars. But those that did do this thing basically brought with them some humans that eventually uh, like combined with them, so the Chimerians combined with the original humans from Earth, and that's why we have a human colony in the lands of Mars. Uh, of course you can't arrive there because it's dead, uh, Mars is mainly dead nowadays, it's a red planet for a reason, but there are some that think that there is some something maybe beneath the continental shelf of Mars, so even if we don't have like pictures or anything really that can explain where these lands went to, we know that they existed by looking at the like like the shape of Mars and stuff like that. Then we had the Argira, which were another couple islands here uh, next to the human colony of Stera Sumeria. We have Eridania. Eridania is the like second part of Aeria. While Aeria is, well, I mean, was basically uninhabited by humans, Eridania was actually inhabited by some humans. It was near Elysium, which is this thing here, and once again, if you need the explanation I'll give you, Elysium is the Greek afterlife, the ancient Greek afterlife. So Elysium was where the dead would be chosen by Hades, and the Hades would decide who goes where, so some dead would go to the uh, Tantalos, I think was the, like, bad part of the afterlife, maybe. Then there were some fields where the souls of the people in the afterlife could go to, which would be basically useless. They were just fields where these souls would wander for eternity and not really achieve anything. And then for the heroes and the people that actually accomplished much in life, we had Elysium. So in this map, we could try to like place Elysium in an actual place, and here it's where it's placed. So next to Eridania, and the reason Eridania exists is because Eridania is the fields, like the almost infinite fields where these souls would actually go through while they were waiting to achieve Elysium. And since Mars is red, since Mars is dead, as at least we believe that Mars is dead as a planet, uh, of course the Elysium is gone. I mean, the lands exist, but the, the life on it and the souls are gone. And that is also explained by the same uh, path of knowledge that explains how the Asgardians uh, are basically dead. Basically, since the religion of the ancient Greeks stopped existing, Elysium has no reason to exist anymore, the souls don't go with there anymore, they are brought to other lands of other religions, and therefore that's why Elysium is dead. Then we have Thule 1 and Thule 2, these are written like Thule, but that um, that uh, Y is actually a Greek Upsilon letter, it's uh, meant to be uh, spelled as Thule, which you probably already know. Thule is the northern land that a lot of humans were searching, and um, I don't really agree with the placement of this island on the Nos Confundi map. I believe the Thule island was either in like the actual continent, uh, I mean uh, either in Earth or in the second ring. But I don't think it was on the lands of Mars. And here we have not only the first Thule, which was the ancient Greek Thule, the ones those and the Romans believed to exist, but we have even Thule II, which is the Thule that was discovered during the Middle Ages and reported on but never actually recovered. So basically the explanation of this map was both the ancient Greeks and the people in the Middle Ages, like the Nordics, the, the Scandinavians, they both saw both of the Thules, but both Thules eventually went away for reasons like uh, Astro, change in lands or maybe just a wormhole and they were transported to the lands of Mars. But I have difficulties believing that because Mars was already a dead planet while Thule 2 existed. So while I could explain Thule 1 existing here 
like Elysium and Eridania, or even Terra Cimmeria, I had difficulties believing that even Thule 2 could exist in a planet like this, because it was already in the Middle Ages and Mars was already on that planet in the Middle Ages. But you decide, basically it's not up to me, of course, I'm just an explainer, uh, you decided which one of these is the one that is true. So these were the lands of Mars, then we have, and I think this is very interesting, the Anunnaki's lands. And the Anunnaki's lands is like this vast, uh, endless wasteland, basically, where the Anunnaki were used to live. If you don't know well, who the Anunnaki uh, were, you can easily research this online, but the Anunnaki were like these... They are thought to be mythological creatures, but some believe they're real. They were these uh, kind of divine entities that visited the um, early, uh, I believe, Sumerians, if I'm not wrong, or Babylonians, and they planted human knowledge into them, so they like made them learn how to do the most basic of stuff, and a lot of people believe they are aliens that came from uh, land beyond the ice walls, which is what is represented in this case. The Anunnaki's land is represented as this huge landmass, even bigger than the lands of Mars, as you can see, but it's split in two parts, and it's surrounded by other places. We have the Anunnaki's land here, and then we have the lands of Seth. So already here we saw that we had Geminia with the ancient Egyptian gods, but of course, in case you didn't know, the ancient Egyptian religion had a split at a, some, at a certain point, because a pharaoh decided that he didn't want people to believe in the ancient gods of Egypt. So I think it was um, Akhenaten that did this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Akhenaten, this uh, Egyptian pharaoh, at some point decided that the Egyptian gods should not be worshipped at all, and only the sun god should be worshipped, which was, I believe, Aton, something like that. And he forced the Egyptian to believe that, but after his death, people started believing to the Egyptian goddess again. So the way it's portrayed in this map of Nos, Nos Confundum is basically that the original homeland of the Egyptians was in Geminia, so just like Asgard, but after the like interruption and corruption of the religion by Akhenaten, uh, they changed their land and went to the lands that are here. So the lands of Seth and the Sea of Horus. Seth, once again, being the uh, god of uh, ancient Egyptian death and the afterlife, and Horus being a warrior god, in this case, a son of Ra, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So while here we have Geminia, which is divided between Geminia Seth and Geminia Ra, which is Geminia for the sun god, we have here Geminia of Horus. So the way I see this is Geminia remains the sole domain of Ra in the modern times, while the rest of these lands are now divided between Seth and Horus, where Seth rules the wasteland where uh, the dead come to, or the dead used to come to, and then Horus uh, rules this like more planet looking stuff, which is also uh, surrounded by the Anunnaki's lands. I think this is a pretty clever portrayal of how the religions must be like when portrayed on the map of Nos Confundum. Then we have the lands of the Custodians. Uh, I'm not really sure what these are. I believe these are like the lands of some of the most important people in existence, but I might be wrong. Here we have the Saint Germain Islands, Saint Germain being an important figure in uh, like European history. Then we have the Machiavelli Islands. In case you didn't know, Machiavelli was one of the most important people in Italian history because he devised the ideal, like a political idea that meant that rulers of kingdoms, the ends uh, justify the means. So here I believe are people even like Master Flint here. Uh, I'm not really sure who that is, but we have more people like Fraternity, the lands of the Portuguese, so probably some people that were very important in European history that devised these like sort of different ideologies to be around and probably the lands of the custodians are because these are the custodians of humanity in some sort because they change the way that humanity lives. At least that's my interpretation of this. Uh, so now we already saw a very big portion of this uh, I guess, Nos Confundum map, I would like to find more, um, I would just guess, more accurate and HD 
portrayals of this map because this is very not HD. But let's just trace a, a big line on the parts we actually explored for now. So we have the, of course, Earth with the furry circles, I mean the free rings. Then we have the lands of Mars, the lands of the Custodians. We even have a, a small island here near the Custodians. I can't really, really read it. Let me, let me see if I can read it. Resurrection Islands or Resurrection Lands. That's interesting. So maybe that's where these... Oh, okay. I, I, think, I, I think I got it. I think I got it. Um, these important people in human history basically gained a land after they died. And they resurrected in the Resurrection Islands, or lands, there's, there's, there's no islands here, just one island. And uh, once they got there, they were transported to their own, like, kingdom of some sort. So Machiavelli got a kingdom, Saint Germain got a kingdom, Saint Germain, um, so on and so forth. Which would be probably a better explanation than simply, oh look, they magically appeared on this other part. I mean... Yeah, through wormholes, but they were already dead, so it wouldn't make any sense if it was a wormhole, right? Alright, let me check with the Horus Lands, then we have the Lands of Ninma, once again, have no idea what that is. I have to do more research for the next coming episodes, if you guys like this video. Um, if you do, I will try to make more of these, but they are pretty hard to make, of course. Especially since... Oh, wait, 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 before we... Stop, I do want to cover this. So here we have the Tierras de Gilgamesh. Uh, this is literally where Gilgamesh is right now. We have the lands of Enkidu, uh, both Enkidu and Gilgamesh being parts of ancient uh, Mesopotamian uh, mythology or religion. Uh, Gilgamesh is very well known, the hero that could not die, he searched for immortality forever. And yeah, they were very, import very important characters in their histories. Uh, Gilgamesh was also in contact with the Anunnaki, they, he even uh, defeated, if I'm not wrong, some divine entities, which, much like the Machiavelli and Saint Germain Islands, might be explained why they have their own lands here, next to the Anunnaki's lands. So basically, once you do something so great, so memorable, and so important in life, that you are remembered for all of human history, just like the Machiavelli, Saint Germain, and of course, Gilgamesh, you might get one like own kingdom slash island slash planet to inhabit once you're dead. At least that's how I see it. And also we have the lands of Neptune here. So this is interesting. So lands of Neptune, of course, refers to the planet, like the actual planet of Neptune. Um, but what's interesting here is that it's divided into three parts, Triton, Poseidon and Nereida. So, for those that do not know, these are names related to ancient uh, Greek mythology slash religion, and Poseidon was the... Funny enough, Poseidon and Neptune are the same person, like the same god. Poseidon and Neptune are just two different names, since Poseidon was the ancient Greek name, while Neptune was the ancient Roman name. But they also mentioned the same person, so this uh, ancient uh, Greek god that was the ruler of the waves, ruler of the oceans, and he would basically choose um, basically everything that uh, was to do with uh, the sea. So to give him his own planet, mm, I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense, yeah. It's a bit complicated though. It is interesting. Then we have the Terras de la Delusion. De oh wait, no, this is not Delusion. De la Desilusion. Oh, the Islands of Disillusion. That's Spanish. Um, I don't really know what those are. The Islands of Disillusionment. I maybe something to do with like. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The Islands of Disillusionment. Probably once. Oh, okay. Maybe I get it. Once you get to the islands of disillusionment and you have discovered all the lands that we have talked about today, you realize that maybe all you traveled to was not really much because the map of Nos Confundum is huge. What we discovered and what we searched for is not even a fifth of what exists in this map and what is explained. There's so much to discover, so much to explore in the Terra Infinita map. Even the author says that he doesn't know where it ends. It's literally Terra Infinita, which means literally infinite land. And as you can see, even he has unknown zones, 
where it doesn't know what is going on on the borders of the unknown. So I find it very interesting that we even managed to explain some of these territories, like the lands of Neptune, Anunnaki's lands, lands of Mars, the basically the Earth and the two rings uh, that surround it, the Pleiades, the Terras, the Gilgamesh, lands of Seth, Sea of Horus, lands of Custodians, Resurrection Islands, and so on and so forth. But there is much to do more. Uh, I want to check if I can find some more HD maps, but I would like to find them from the original source material, so it's uh, it's a good explanation that has valid sources. But let me know if you like this uh, uh, video, let me know if you want to know more about the lands of Nos Confundum, and that's basically it for this video. Uh, I think I've done enough. Uh, let's see each other in the next video.